Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Strategy Gamers. Today we're going to be watching a replay of a multiplayer game I did on Wargame Red Dragon. So, I had someone telling me in the comments how maybe I should try out some multiplayer, and I believe on Conquest mode, um, and a few different AI settings I could try on these different um, game modes, I guess you would call them, and also to be doing some multiplayer games. Now, I've been wanting to do some multiplayer games for a while, so I decided to go with that. And, yeah, so I was playing around with it. I've done, like, six, seven games so far. I'll be honest, I've lost all of them, but this one, I decided to go with the one I, I have won. Because the other ones, I don't, I don't want to talk about those. <laughs> I didn't do, I didn't, I made some bad decisions. I, I, I did some, I did some terrible tactical observation stuff, and it didn't end well. And I lost... It was very sad. But yeah, this one, I had a really good teammate. I'm going to give them, like, all the credit for this. In the end, I think they got, like, over three quarters of the winning 2,000 points. I really just played a support role. And in the end, they got, like, I think it was 1,555 points. So yeah, I was really just playing a defensive role in this entire thing. So I'm going to give, first of all, make team, not war. They were my teammate. I'm going to give them credit for pretty much the win of this. But yeah, so I was using a um, Commonwealth deck that I had had, I had created, and I'd been testing out multiplayer, and I'd been editing. One of the actual original problems I had with the deck, I had no units with Napalm, and my artillery was useless. I had no mortars. I couldn't really... They took too long to... I had the long-range artillery, and I just couldn't... I couldn't use them. Every time I target something, they'd move away, or they it would be too big a uh, area, and they just never hit. So I switched to mortars, and I guess you could say a semi-long range artillery, um, an Australian artillery. I can't remember the name of it, but I know I spawn or not spawn. Um, I know I requisitioned, deployed, something like that. Um, when kind of mid game, and I was using it, and I like it a lot more. It, it's not necessarily going to just destroy everything. But I found it was pretty good, it would break up the enemy, it had a decent kind of area of fire, the circle thing, it wasn't too big, it wasn't too small of an area of fire, and it wouldn't necessarily take out tanks, but it would definitely stun them. And combined with the mortars that I'd put in, I actually had some pretty decent artillery. I think the Australian semi-long range was like 7,000 meters or something. And yeah, so the majority of my tank force, my... Lightest tank was Australian, an Australian tank. Um, I, I, it's not bad. It was fifty-five points each. They're, if you can use them right, they can be pretty good. Like if you, I had uh, my Mexuses here. They're, I believe they are Canadian tanks. I had them right here in this forest. It's the same thing with again. I cannot, I cannot remember the name of all these tanks, but um. The Australian one, it's not going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavy tanks, but it's definitely useful if you can have it in a kind of high, like, hidden position, and maybe you're targeting down some transport vehicles, if you're trying to suppress some infantry, and if they're in numbers and you can hit the heavy tanks from the right angle, they can be useful for that. But I'd say the majority, I use these Leopard C2 Mexus, I'm pretty sure those are 75 points each, and I just love them. They're... Pretty good front armor. Um, let's see, they have they're equipped with the L7A3 and the G or GPMG. So I never really got them in close enough range to really use the GPMG. But again, these aren't the best tanks. They're kind of middle, medium kind of tanks, you guess you might call them. But they had decent range and they were great to just hide in these forests and they stopped the enemy from moving forward. Combined with my anti-air, which I'm not sure if I have any, um, deployed. No, I don't. Uh, yeah, you'll see one of those pretty soon. I started deploying them, like, a lot there. Uh, they're the kind of anti-air where one of them's not gonna do much, but when you deploy four of them, it's not gonna work. The AI or player or whatever you're fighting, if you have about four of them, they're not getting any planes through there. They'll just fire so many missiles at it, it will, it has no chance. But one of them on their own, I found they can't really, like, they might get a light, lucky hit, but I just haven't found them very effective in, um, without, n um, numerical superiority. Yes, that sounds smart and right. Yes, let's go with that. 
So, as for my infantry, I had all Australian infantry. I liked um, the units, they were cheap, they were effective, they were the commandos. Now, this is an armored deck, I don't believe I said that before, but I didn't have too many options for the infantry, and I looked over the stats, and with the price, yeah, they might not have been the best one, but I'm still trying to get used to making really effective multiplayer decks. I found that the Australian commando units worked fairly well. They, I, I, they were able... I wish I could got them on helicopters, but I don't believe you can do that with armored decks. But for this, they got there where they needed... They got where they were needed. They have a decent um, selection of weapons. They're, I'd say they're primarily... They're not really anti-tank. They actually aren't great against infantry. Let's see. Yeah, we can get their weapons here. So they do have anti-tank weapons, but they're not the most effective. I'd say what their best stat is they're cheap and you have a lot of them. I was able to get a ton of them, and that, like I said, they're not terrible, they're not great, but they're cheap, and you have a lot of them. There you go, that's all That's all that matters. And they, they did what they needed to do. I liked using them kind of in the forests, because what happened kind of late game, this whole area, this whole forest, nobody wanted to go through here. I had um, Mexuses all through here, and he, um, my ally had infantry and the whole pretty much secondary base set up here and I kind of bring some infantry into support this area was the main battle zone because nobody could cross here and there were and since all of his defenses were here and they couldn't see into the forest this was the only way either of us could move in an attack because as you can see they have tons of defenses set up here as well but you know you're probably all wondering right now why do you not have Delta captured what are you doing so we kind of went with a risky kind of strategy that actually I think in the end really paid off for us so what we did we decided we were gonna have my ally here he would set up a defensive line right here so that way they can't just straight push into Delta well I started deploying some infantry into the area create a secondary line of defense eventually we got a command unit or control vehicle or whatever you might call it into Delta just so we can get those extra resources but this way my ally was able to get way more troops on this line because he kept his uh, command unit here, I believe. Yes, he did. So this way he didn't need to buy another command unit. So he was able to deploy way more troops and he didn't just get totally overrun, which if you watch most videos where if you don't really get those extra units, where if you try to send another command unit to try to, um, what's the word? Compete? No. Well, yeah, compete works actually. If you try to compete with them in Alpha, you just don't have the troops to hold that position. But now, while we might not have been able to get a command unit, we definitely stopped them from fully taking this area and moving into Delta. So we're able to get a nice defensive line here in Delta, and, or sorry, here in Alpha, and secure Delta at a second point where we had a full defensive line that they just couldn't cross. If we didn't do that, honestly, I think they would have completely ripped through Alpha and we would probably end up having more intense fighting in Delta late game. And this is a really good defensive position. We have a nice city here, forest here, forest here. So if I were to choose where I wanted to make my defensive line, it would definitely be here. Because if they were attacking, you can see they have this whole forest line. If they were attacking us and we were forced back here, I could have infantry here. Great, but I'm not going to see them till they leave the forests. But here, this way, we got to use that forest. And you see we have all of our transport units just kind of creating... A line of defense you know if they were to send infantry they can be fairly effective so on to where I'm creating my defensive line you can see what I was saying about these mexes where I would hide them in the forests got one on this side I should have the anti-air coming up by now oh really I don't not yet all right and then I had some infantry falling back here the one mistake I made I put a lot of work into defending this I believe I sent up a few more tanks I was actually late game, tried to make an infantry push in a Bravo, didn't go very well, I lost a lot of troops. But that's what I was trying to do, and they never attacked here. They focused all of their troops here. Everything, let's actually speed it up just a little bit. Uh, three's good. Just because not really much happens. Oh, wait, this is where I believe something happens. This whole area, we wanted to try to create a defensive line, I told them, try to move up here. And at some point, they're going to send a plane, and they just destroy every piece of infantry here. Because what I, we wanted to do here, we wanted to get a bit of a forward base, almost, you could say. 
because our goal was to force them out of Alpha and try to starve them out of those resources, because we were at a bit of an early game disadvantage in terms of resources because we didn't control Delta. So we really wanted to try and force them out of Delta and maybe prevent them from getting those extra resources um, late game when we would be getting those resources and maybe we'd be able to push them back. And this is kind of the means of which we wanted to do that. Yeah, no, we really should have just stacked defensive. Here it comes now. You, you're, you can, uh, uh, hmm. No, I did no. And that happened. But yeah, like I just said, we just really wanted to get that forward base, push them out of Alpha, and take those resources late game, where I believe those resources late game, they matter a lot more than early game. Because as you can see, we didn't have those resources, and we played it defensively, and we were able to hold this area without those resources. But late game, when we're spawning, or sp I keep saying spawning, deploying tanks, helicopters... Um, we're really getting our artillery into good position and starting to zero down on a lot of their command units or um, infantry defensive positions. They need to counter that, but if they don't have the resources to counter that, you know, they can't really do much. Unless they're, like, epic, awesome skills players kind of thing, like, you know, the MLG Pro kind of thing. Major League Gaming Pro. But, um, yeah, unless they're like that, there's not much you can do. Let's speed it up again. So, as you can see, my ally's sending up some Abrams, because he was playing an American deck. Oh, I love this tank. This is just an awesome tank. This, I think in this they have the M1A2, M1A1, M11P, like M1A2HA, M1A1HA, something like that. Well, yeah, he was getting some tanks. Let's see, what was I doing? Yeah, at this point I was mainly... Oh, there's my anti air right there. There it is. This is the anti-air. I had pretty much the same version, Australian and British versions. This was, like I said, in numbers, it's amazing. Carries eight rapier. I doubt I'm saying that right. Of the anti-air missiles. In numbers, they are extremely effective. Amazing anti-air. In numbers. As you can see, the enemy, again, not pushing. They're not trying to attack me. They're focusing pretty much everything here. And this is a mistake I noticed they're making. They're put, look how many tanks, they have a tank there, let's see what do they got over here, what is this, they have an anti-air there, they have two more tanks here, they are obviously were investing quite a bit of their armor into defending this position, when really, if they took that, combined it with this forces, these forces, and pushed Foxtrot, there was no way I was going to hold that, especially if they combined their helicopters with that, I couldn't have hold, held that, I would have been just destroyed. But they, were, they thought I was going to attack Bravo, where again, our abstract, kind of risky strategy would have been securing Delta and Foxtrot and making a big push into either Bravo and Alpha. But since we went really defensive in Alpha and secured Delta at a later date, I think that might have thrown them off a little bit, because they thought we were probably going to push for Bravo. But we focused all of our attention in Alpha. Again, defensively, we forced them to come to us. And pretty much through the entire game, we maintained a very slim lead. Over them, and again, you can see my ally, 120 points, me 10 points. Again, because my forces were concentrated here where they didn't really do anything at all. Oh, here's the Australian tank, I think, yes. The Leopard AS-1. Not a great tank, but if you use it right, you it can do some damage, definitely. So, what else do we got going on? Oh, another Napalm Strike. Oh, I missed that. I don't know how to go back. I've tried so many times to go back in time, but this is the closest I can get. Us going forward at point twenty, the speed. Which is, I guess, like, bullet time. Let's switch it to two. And now you can kind of see where this... I guess it's more mid-game that this started then, where this area just turned into a battle zone. And they tried to send in their infantry, but he, uh, my ally had marines right here destroying anything that tried to move through. And at this point, I was sending up some reinforcements. Yeah, you can see um, I had some infantry here. I believe this is mine, I think. Is it? It looks like mine. Might not be, though. Uh, let's see. Did I send anything yet? I might not have. Oh, no, I did. I have my anti-air kind of here. Oh, yeah. As you can see, that plane got away. Oh, I launched a beacon. Oh yes, I was um, going to do an airstrike here. 
And then the enemy did an airstrike there. But my plane was so slow, his infantry killed their infantry before my plane even got there. Let's see, what am I doing at the moment? I believe I was, reinf again, reinforcing this position, sending a ton of anti-air there. As I'm pretty sure I saw some helicopters moving around and I got really scared they were trying to push. So I was moving a lot of anti-air in the region. And... Uh, it was around this time. Yes, there it is. Right there. I think this is mine. It m might not be. Wait, what, what, what are my transport? M113A3030? No, that wasn't mine. I don't think those were 3030. Are they? Yeah. Oh, 3050? Is that mine? Did it say 3050? Oh, it is 3050. Okay. So, yes, I am sending troops at this point. This, these were some of the commando troops I was sending up because I saw this is where the main battle's going. So I started trying to get some reinforcements up to my ally and, again, playing that support role that I was kind of going with. I should be... Oh, is that my artillery right there? The M108? Yes, it is. This is that Australian artillery. It should start firing a bit more late game. Extremely useful. I really love that artillery unit. I don't think I ended up using any mortars in this game. And that was the only artillery unit I think I used, but extremely useful. And this small. Oh my goodness. They are, like, I know they're supposed to be anti-tank, but they are really anti-tank units. <laughs> Amazing. I, uh, if I ever play um, an American deck, I have to make sure I have to include those. I don't think I've ever used those before. Oh, here's another bit. Let's slow this down. What I, see, what I wanted to do here, I wanted to just go on a napalm strike right here, but he was moving his troops in really close. I'm like, I'm going to hit his troops. So I, at this point, was I trying to get my troops in? My troops are back here, so I ended up supporting over here. And I think he ended up winning this with his units. They ended up winning this battle, I think. But yeah, I wanted to just napalm, but I'm like, he, if he retreats at this point, his all of these units are going to get wiped out. He has a significantly better chance of getting this small out if he stays and fights. Because they are in a forest, so no. They have a chance of winning if I don't napalm, so I did hold off on that. And it was this wave of units, or the next wave, where it didn't go well. My, they just kind of got destroyed when they were going in. Just kind of drove in, and they had infantry there, and they destroyed one of the transports, and we just had to kind of fight them off and then move into the forest. Let's see. Now, yeah. Now I believe he starts to retreat. But they did considerable damage, considering how outnumbered they were in that scenario. But I don't... I think this small made it out. I hope they make it out, because like I said, they are amazing units. So let's check out what's going on here. Yeah, as you can see, I'm just had a nice amount of the Leopard A5-1, A5-1 plus the Mexus, some infantry. I didn't, I think this is the last time I started reinforcing, except when I sent some infantry because I was getting ready to make a push. And I sent in some Mexuses as well because we were starting to push in this area. But we were not at all aware of how many helicopters, anti-tank units, and everything they had. So I think I ended up just putting those troops in the forest. And I uh, moved them up a bit later. But yeah, the infantry-infantry battle still continues to go. Ho yep, here's my uh, commandos. As you can see, we took some losses on this unit. But we were able to win that fight. That one guy, he's just like, I will win. They can't beat me. You always get that one unit, you're just sitting there like, okay, come on, let's end this. Just route or something. But you don't want to move in because you know you're going to lose troops, because they have the LMG. So if you move in, you're going to lose troops. So, where, where's, okay, here we go. Let's get a, another view of this Mexus. I just love this tank. It's so cool. Not more than the Abrams, though. I think I even called a Challenger 2 in this game. I think I deployed one of those at some point. We'll, we'll see about that. So at this point, the enemy actually took a lead over us. But we definitely reclaimed our lead. Oh, yep, this is when I sent in that infantry because I was going to try to make a push. I wasn't... I didn't know. I didn't know that they had this these tanks here. 
How was I to know? But it's just funny how differently this thing could have gone if they'd taken the troops here, pushed Foxtrot, or sent them to reinforce here. They would have annihilated this infantry. Look at this point. We didn't have a lot of infantry here. It was got pretty their side too. Of course, they didn't have much left. But both sides, we didn't have a lot of infantry. And if we move these troops, anything here, we were going to get destroyed. So if they'd taken their troops down here, I wouldn't have attacked for a while. I'm still sending up those infantry. Oh, and you can see here, they have that recon that we didn't even notice. We just kind of drove by. But if they'd pushed here or here, we wouldn't have had the troops to stop them. But they were going just as defensive as we were, because they thought I was going to make a major push. But I just sent some infantry units. Because I was seeing how much troops they were committing here, and I assumed that after we made a failed push up here, that it wouldn't be going well. Oh, is my artillery firing? He is firing. Yeah, I thought they were concentrating everything on that side. So I wasn't planning on making any major pushes. I just sent the infantry, and I thought that would be enough. I thought also that they were having their command unit and a bunch of infantry up here. I was shelling this place like crazy. And again, you can see if we pushed at this point with the amount of troops we now had, we probably would have won. But we thought they had more troops here, but really they were concentrated down on this side. And this is kind of where I lost a few units, I think. Are they walking into the fire? Are they seriously? I didn't even... What are they doing? Why are they doing that? No! Turn around! Why are you walking into the fire? No! No, don't, don't lie there! Run! I didn't even... What's the pathfinding in this game? They just walk straight into fire. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's the challenger. Oh, where is that? Where's the challenger? I want to see that tank. Oh. Here it is. No, nah. no, we don't want the Humvee. We want to see the challenger. That is like... Look at that tank. I think it died at some point. I don't think it did well. Oh, I remember what happened. Yes, they took out the command unit. There's one recon unit here. One recon guy just took out our command unit. Because, <clears throat> again, we didn't notice him before. And I kept my challenger to defend the command unit that I pulled back from Foxtrot. I think, yeah, we pulled it back from Foxtrot because it was giving us less resources than Delta, so... I had to keep my challenger back because I'm like, I don't know what took that out. Was it a tank? Was it a recon? We, I wasn't sure. So I wanted to keep a heavy unit back there that I knew wouldn't go down easy. So that's why we kept that instead of the Humvee because I thought it was a tank. And I was really scared. Because in almost every one of my games that I've played, they've snuck around tanks or helicopters and just destroyed our command unit. Might show a replay of one of those, but... Oh, yep, and here's my failed attack. Yep, you can see, it went very well. We gained roughly no ground. Took, let's see, there was six, ten, and eight, yeah, so we lost about probably 60 men in that attack. Very successful, actually, well, no, not really, because all these guys kind of... I was able to save them. But it was at that point that I realized, okay, I'm not attacking here. We definitely need to focus everything in Alpha, where they're not able to really attack us and defend as well as they are here. Because you can see they have tons of defensive advantages here in the forest and such. And they, they were making a counterattack, probably thinking that was the majority of my forces. But now you can see with these tanks that I was talking about earlier, what they can do in the right position. But again, they're in the forest, so they don't always have great view. So I'm pretty sure we ended up taking out one of these tanks at some point. Yep, you can see. Oh, there we go. This Leopard A5-1+. Plus. Boom. There you go. He's got a... He didn't have... Oh, did he? He actually didn't have that great an angle, but he took him out. But yeah, the thing is, they're in the forest, so they don't always get that line of sight. And I'll say no line of sight, and you can't actually attack. I'm pretty sure I started the Leopard push, the Leopard C2 Mexus push, pretty soon. I'm going to keep an eye on that, too. Did we take out any more tanks? I don't think we did, because I was really scared of advancing at that point. 
because I didn't know how many tanks they had, and I really should have been utilizing my recon, but I sent a few recon up here early game, and they just kind of died, maybe, possibly? I don't know, I kind of lost track, and then they weren't there anymore. Didn't go well. So, we're getting pretty close to the end of the game, and again, you can just see, it was late game that I racked up up to about 450 points, but you can see my ally, they did everything offensively. Everything I did was just purely defensively, and this I find so funny. I found this hilarious. They had no clue where we had our troops concentrated. They just were firing random artillery. They had no clue at all. And I still have my challenger back here. I didn't know if we took out that unit or not, and I thought they were just, uh, hiding. Oh, it looks like we took out another tank over here. Did we? Yes, we did. It was probably the A5-1+. Plus. Waiting for that leopard push, because it was a really cool push. We just wiped out everything up here. It's actually pretty cool. And you can see I had a few planes flying over, but... Eh, I just... Couldn't, because they had, uh, early game they had a lot of anti-air here. I'm not sure if they still did. Late game. Oh, here comes the leopard push. But yeah, most of my, anti my air attacks just didn't go well. Because they're anti-air. That's one thing I want to work on. I want to be a bit more smart with my air. Because I've lot of, lost a lot of planes just because I've been stupid with how I'm using my air. And my planes. Ooh, that Mexus. This Mexus, I'm, it was one of these Mexuses, they just got hit so many times. Oh, yeah, it was this one. It just got hit with, like, so many missiles and just kept surviving. Yeah, it was this one. Ah, oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah, and now you can see my points start to go up because I just took out everything here. And I think I, I sent in a Skyhawk, and it had a missile. Right, and it's shooting at one of the enemy's um, tanks or something, and the missile's halfway there, and then we get enough points of the game ends. I'm like, no, why couldn't we have just ended with the enemy tank exploding and my plane flying off? That would have been like the perfect thing ever. That would have been so awesome, but it was not to be, unfortunately. And then this Mexus kind of went toe to toe with these T55 AM2 Merida. Let's see, are those good tanks? I can't see their armor specs, fortunately. But yeah, so we just went toe to toe, and again, these Mexuses in good positioning, they can destroy it. And we started targeting these guys too. If they have these good positioning, they're just so useful. Unfortunately, they got taken out there. But I just love that tank. I use those more than anything else. With I'd say the Australian tank, what's it called again? The Leopard A5 One Plus is a close second. Not even close, really. Oh, and there's the win. But yeah, they're just so good, and if you can get them in the right position, they they really work if you use them correctly. So let's look at the stats here. So, well, if my ally might have lost more, they definitely made up for it in the amount of uh, kills they had, way more than me. And you can see the enemy team actually had something similar. Granted, I had uh, many more kills and many more losses than they did, but you can see uh, they're... One player who accounted for almost all of the kills, and the other guy who didn't really do anything, but he was probably playing a very support kind of role. He probably made up most of those defenses on the side where my failed attack was. And you can just see, maybe we were both kind of going for the same kind of thing. One person was doing most of the attacking, the other in a supporting role. But yeah, this was my first multiplayer victory. I think six losses, one win. I think that's pretty good. I think. Yeah, I'm going with that. Let's, I'm good at this game. But now I might do a few replays on some of the other games that I played that were close games that I find entertaining. I'll probably watch through those replays and think about doing a video on those. But I would like to thank everybody for watching this video. And if you enjoyed this new kind of war game replay multiplayer thing I'm doing, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and subscribe, and leave a comment down in the comments window box description thing i don't know what to call it and i'll see y'all next time bye for now